Now, you know, for most of us, our teen years are something that we remember with a mix of nostalgia and embarrassment, to be honest. High school sports, heartbreak, a few regrettable choices. In that respect, Jackie Lee Cogdell isn't that different. He was a star athlete, handsome, and he made some mistakes. Yeah, but unlike most teenagers, the mistakes that he made defined his life and destroyed others. Now on the eve of his 46th birthday, he's been given a second chance on your sides. Ann Schindler reports. I just got pictures everywhere. The photos are faded. Jack, come look at this. Some memories are too. I don't have it in no order. 30 years is a long time. This is Jack, who that was. But Jackie Cogdell's mom, Juanita, will never forget the sharp outlines of August 18th, 1990. They asked me, did I have a son? And I said, yes. They wanted to come inside. And they arrested him. And they told me that he had shot somebody. Moments later, she watched her 16-year-old son, Jackie, leave home in the back seat of a cop car. I just could not believe what had happened. One night, you go out with your cousin, and your whole life is gone. It was a shocking development. The Lee High School football star had just finished a twice a day summer practice. And that as a teenager, you can make some real stupid decisions. He hadn't even planned on going out that night. One night, joyriding, drinking, pulled a trigger and shot Brandon Lee Knowles. The four teenagers decided to steal 19 year old Brandon Knowles' car. When Brandon Knowles ran, Jackie fired. He confessed to police that night and began his second life behind bars. My hair even fell out the first couple of months. It fell out big, two, I had two big holes. You could look all the way to, the, my, to my scalp. It fell out. I was young. I made a mistake. He really is a classic example of someone who, with peer pressure, teenage, lack of executive function, found himself in a bad, horrible, tragic situation. It's probably impossible to understand why 16-year-old Jackie did what he did, but attorney Terry Sopp says his crime needs to be filtered by what we do know about adolescent brains. Juveniles are immature, and they're not really adults yet. That fact, now accepted science, is the main reason the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that life without parole for juveniles constitutes cruel and unusual punishment. But at the time, potentially facing death, Jackie took a plea. Jackie ended up with a life sentence at age 17. For the past three decades, Jack has reflected on and regretted his crime. I deal with it every day. Where would he be now and what kind of father would he be? Not a day in his life goes by that he does not think about them and that he does not pray for them. People can change. People can change. I'm in awe of God. I'm in awe of his forgiveness because it took numerous years before his mama like, I didn't know that she had wrote a letter saying that she forgive me now. Some things people just can't forgive right away. And I understand, because I took her son's life. Jackie's mom also grieves for her son's victims. I always prayed for the other family. Lord, have mercy on them, you know. Because one thing you have to re realize is I'm able to see Jack, but they only able to see a headstone. That lesson hit home with cruel irony three years ago. Aaron Dion Cogdell, senior. This was hard. <laughs> Sorry. When my younger brother Aaron was killed, 20 uh, June 9th of 2016, so she has experienced both sides. Aaron's murder remains unsolved, but Juanita is celebrating the return of her oldest son. Resentenced under a Florida Supreme Court ruling that found the state's parole system unfair to juveniles, Jackie was released September 12th. Those locks say, clink, clink. When I heard that and he pushed the door, I said, Lord, I thank you for freeing my child out of 29 years. She ran through the house just hollering and thanking God. He is now living on probation, newly married to a woman he met through a cousin four years ago, helping his mother and trying to live the promise of a second chance. The first night, when I was home that Thursday, uh, September 12th, I was laying in bed, couldn't hardly sleep, and I could see the moon shining through the light, and I just pulled the curtain back and just looked out there. I said, boy, it's nice to be free. It's so nice being free. With photojournalist Jeff Renfro, 
Ann Schindler, First Coast News, on your side. So nice being free. And this story may not, in fact, be over. Ann tells us the state attorney's office recently filed a notice of appeal which says the judge's order amounted to an illegal sentence. There is no date yet set for when that appeal will be heard.